Hello everyone, it's me, Clayson. I just got back from watching Ant-Man and the Wasp. Now, if you were worried that Avengers Infinity War was a bit too dark and grim for you, then this film should really catch your interest, considering that it's a light-hearted adventure with some drama mixed in for good measure, mainly because it's a Marvel movie, and a lot of them are basically drama fil dramatic films mixed in with a ton of jokes. And this one is more like a light-hearted comedy mixed in with a bit of drama. And honestly, it works out to its benefit considering it takes two to get it right, and Ant-Man and the Wasp do get it right. But let's get to the story, shall we? The story revolves around Ho Hope Van Dyne, played once again by Angel Evangeline Lilly, and her father, Hank Pym, played once again by Michael Douglas, trying to save Janet Van Dyne, play played by Michelle Pfeiffer from the Quantum Realm, while at the same time, Paul Rudd's Scott Lang is placed under ho house arrest, and he has to help them out with things while also avoiding the, the authorities and also helping out his his criminal buddies from the first film. But that's all I'll say about the story without spoiling anything, so let's get to what worked about the film. What works about the film is what works with a lot of... a lot of Marvel films, in fact. A lot of it is the mix between the comedy and the drama. You laugh a lot of the comedic moments and you do feel for the drama, mainly because it was set up so well in the first film and we get a lot of emotional payoffs in this film. And the comedy ranges from the childish to the callback jokes to the new jokes that are put in to the point where even some of the visual effects like the size changing mechanics are used for jokes. They were in the first film too, but here it seems to amp up the comedy even more, whether it's with giant objects like a giant salt shaker or a giant Pez machine, or with, or with how the size changes affect the characters like how being really big or really tiny can affect can affect Scott Lang. And it seems that most of the serious stuff is given to Hope Van Dyne here, mainly because it's shown time and time again that she's probably the better hero suited for all of this in the grand scheme of things. But that also brings me to one of my negatives about the film. Mainly the fact that Scott, Scott Lang is treated as a bit of a... Uh, treated as a bit of a dunderhead in this film. Essentially... It's like he, his competence has gone down increasingly. Now, you could say that is mainly due to the fact that this film takes place around two years after the events of the first Ant-Man. And, of course, he'd have a hard time getting back in the game when he's been in house arrest for, for a really long time. But at the same time, he isn't this bumbling. He should have been more competent than this, considering in the first film... He did have his comedic moments, but he was shown to be pretty smart, and a smart person wouldn't do some of the things that he does. Thankfully, it only comes in a few times, but it is still a bit of an annoyance. Also, some of the new characters that, that are included, while they are interesting from a design and backstory perspective, they aren't given too much time to flesh out their characters, considering that if the plot feels overstuffed at points. We have new villains to introduce. In fact, we have two factions of new villains this time. We have, we have to do resolutions to the old plot points, and as well as putting in new plot points. We have to keep continuity with the first film, and all of that in the span of less than two hours. So it can feel like there are a ton of things going on in the plot at once, in what is really more of a breather film, so it does feel like there's a bit of a tonal whiplash there, if you know what I mean. And if you know Marvel films, you know you've got to stick with the credits, considering that the after credit scene is pretty heavy. Let's just say it explains a lot of things from Infinity War that fans have questions about. I don't know if it was planned from the start or not, but I am glad that they put that scene in there. But as a whole, Ant-Man and the Wasp is a very entertaining, comedic film that should please fans of both Ant-Man and the Wasp, but it, but it really could have used a couple of rewrites for, for Scott's competency and some of the, and some of the overstuffed plot elements. Ant-Man and the Wasp gets an 8 out of 10. See you next time.